Hi there, my name is Laurel Netter. I am the chair of the CAS9 Working Group at the International Mass Phenotech Consortium and also the associate director of the Model Production Corps at the Center for Phenogenomics in Toronto. About seven years ago, the International Mouse Phenotyping Consortium, or IMPC as we affectionately call it, began its efforts to illuminate the ignorant, those genes for which little or no functional information exists. We started this effort by using a library of embryonic stem cells with single gene null mutations, also known as gene knockouts, to produce mice. The, this library was built by a previous international effort. The, at the time we started, in about 2010, there were about 14,000 gene knockouts out of the 20,000 protein coding genes in the mouse genome available. In 2013, a transformation in mouse genomics occurred when CRISPR-Cas9, a bacterial adaptive immune system, was co-opted as a facile programmable genome editing tool from mammalian genomes. Previous genome editing tools, such as zinc fingers and um, tailings, were based on proteins engineered to recognize specific DNA sequences. Changing target sites required engineering new proteins with new sequence recognition motifs, so they weren't really appropriate for high throughput mutant mouse production. In contrast, the CRISPR-Cas9 system uses a short RNA sequence called a guide RNA to target the Cas9 endonuclease to its recognition site. This means changing genomic targets is as simple as changing the guide RNA sequence. Since the description of CRISPR-Cas9 as a genome editing tool, several different RNA-guided nucleases have been described and shown to be effective in mammalian cells and mouse embryos. These tools enable access to virtually any gene in the genome. This means the IMPC can be more responsive to nominations by the scientific community since we are no longer limited by the available availability of targeted ES cells. Using genome editing technologies, we have reduced the time from project initiation to completion from about two years to about 14 months, a time frame unheard of before CAS9. The IMPC makes knockout mice by deleting exons in whole or in part to introduce frame shifts in the open reading frame and produce putative null alleles. Understanding the consequences of gene dysfunction can provide supportive evidence for causality of candidate disease genes, in particular those genes with a recessive mode of inheritance, which is generally associated with loss of functional alleles. Phenotypes identified in these knockout mice can also provide clues as to gene function in normal development. However, one of the most exciting aspects of genome editing technology is the ability to make scarless point mutations corresponding to alleles identified in patients. And by scarless, I mean only those mutations so that we don't have to have the other um, coding elements that were necessary for ESL targeting. These types of alleles can assist in diagnosis, moving a variant, a sequence variant, from being correlated with the disease to causative of disease. And they also serve as critical preclinical models for to understand disease and pathogenesis and develop therapies. The IMPC is currently exploring opportunities and collaborations to produce these types of alleles for individual scientists and national and international consortia studying Mendelian diseases. At the same time, several centers are working hard to develop protocols for more complex alleles, such as reporter alleles and conditional alleles, that are reliable and scalable. While these alleles may not become part of our high throughput production, they will serve as benchmarks for mouse model production around the world. The CRISPR revolution, as it's been called, has had a huge impact on the IMPC. Mouse models are made faster and less expensively than before. We can respond quickly to nominations from scientists, and we are working to establish partnerships with precision medicine efforts in diagnosis and therapeutics to further support these endeavors. These tools are also being applied in agriculture and pest and infectious disease control. Perhaps even more amazing is the potential impact of these tools in the clinic. As technical advances developed in mice, cell lines, and elsewhere prove efficiencies and specificity, it will be possible to treat and prevent disease with these genome editing tools. And if you're interested in what we're doing, in more of what we're doing, please see the links below. Thanks.